Self-action leadership. How does it differ from self-leadership? In most regards, the two are mirror images of each other, which is why I spend so much time talking about self-leadership. But there's one particular difference that really separates it from self-leadership, and that is that self-action leadership invokes a moral imperative. Some of you may be familiar with Immanuel Kant and his categorical imperative. This is a similar construct here for the self-action leadership theory and model. The reason why we demand that this moral imperative exists is so that we don't end up with this guy. And I want to contrast Hitler's life with Nelson Mandela for a second. Because the two had strikingly similar journeys in the first several decades of their lives. They were both, they were both disenfranchised, maybe not disenfranchised, but they were both embittered and marginalized socialists. Both were eventually imprisoned because they tried, through violent means, to overthrow their adversaries. But something significantly different happened in the mind of Nelson Mandela versus Adolf Hitler during the time they spent in prison. During Hitler's prison sentence, he wrote Mein Kampf, decrying the Jewish race and calling for their demise and essentially world domination through a rise of a Third Reich, which through powerful self-leadership, he was able to accomplish in an unprecedented fashion. But he lacked the conscience. He lacked the conscience part of self-action leadership. Mandela, on the other hand, in prison, came across a poem called Invictus. You may have seen the movie that was made famous for this poem. Out of the night that darkens me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the captain of my fate. I am the master of my soul. 27 years later, he was released from prison, a changed man, a man whose heart was now overflowing with love rather than hate. Shortly thereafter, a year later, he became president in a democratically elected process in South Africa and became one of the most powerful leaders in the history of that continent and, was, and is credited to this day as one of, the, one of the primary catalysts for the end of apartheid. The difference of conscience. This is why self-action leadership demands a conscience. Anyone, good or evil, can be an effective self-leader but only those who choose the good and the right, like Mandela and others like him, can be qualified as self-action leaders. Now, right and wrong. If these are actually real, then whose right is right and whose wrong is wrong, right? We got a whole bunch of different religions we could turn to, and we got a whole bunch of different political parties that we could turn to. But in the end, truth is non-denominational and non-affiliative. Truth just is. You don't have to belong to a certain sect to accept this self-evident reality. It just is. On the compass, it, the needle points north, not because someone cleverly decided which way was north, because north is. And no matter how clever your arguments that north is really south or north is really west or east, it doesn't change that reality that north is. Sir Winston Churchill, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is. Now, who's going to tell you when you're doing something wrong? You are. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Freedom Focus is not here to set up a new religion. We are here simply to invite you to listen to your own conscience and to go and look in the mirror and self-examine your own life. In the words of the poet Dale Wimbro, when you get what you want in your struggle for pelf, and the world makes you king for a day, go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. 
For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The feller whose verdict counts most in this life is the guy staring back from the glass. You may be like Jack Horner and chisel a plum and think you're a wonderful guy, but the guy in the glass thinks you're only a bum if you can't look him straight in the eye. He's the feller to please. Never mind all the rest, for he's with you clear up to the end. And you've passed your most dangerous, difficult test if the man in the glass is your friend. All of us have this conscience within, the light within. Angel on your shoulder, devil on your shoulder, if you wish. Whatever imagery will help you. But all of us have this sixth sense. You don't have to belong to a particular faith or hold to a certain ideology or philosophy or vote a certain ticket to have a conscience. All human beings have one. And the invitation of self-action, leadership, and freedom-focused is to return to that inner light that can guide us in our lives. Michael Faraday. An English scientist of all things once said this, I will simply express my strong belief that the point of self-education, which consists in teaching the mind to resist its desires and inclinations until they are proved to be right, is the most important of all, not only in things of natural philosophy or science, but in every department of daily life. How right he was, Faraday. Now you can also decipher between right and wrong. This is not all about conscience. You also have a brain, thank goodness. You also have experiences, your own and that of others, wherein we can derive wisdom. Therefore, we can create a balance between conscience, experiences, or common sense, and rationality that will help us to be able to best access truth in our own lives and companies. Now, this concept of a balance between things comes from Aristotle. He put forth a philosophy called the golden mean which basically says that virtue, or the good, or the right, or the true, is, as a general rule, always going to be a balance between excess and deficiency. Some of the craziest people in our society, typically those on the far extremes of one persuasion or the other. As we become more balanced, that helps us, regardless of what it is we're undertaking, to better access the right decision for the right time with the right individuals. So here we have, we've expanded on it to give you a golden mean in triadic form. So there's now three. Conscience, common sense, and rationality. The perfect balance between what our brain says, what our experiences, and the experience of others, AKA a study of history say, and that light within will help us to arrive at the best possible, as, as best as humans possibly can anyway, of finding that inner truth that can help us make the best decisions. And with this construct, we can then actually put forth a secular definition of right and wrong, as follows. Right, thought, speech, and actions that create positive and constructive, long-term consequences for self and others. Key term here is long-term. Okay, there are a lot of things that feel right or seem right in the moment that end up down the road proving themselves to be terribly wrong. Sometimes it, and you know, you touch a hot stove, for example, you jump off a cliff. Well, consequence happens really fast. You realize really quickly that was a wrong choice to make if you want to live anyway or have a hand that's not scalded. But there are other decisions that may take weeks, months, years, decades, generations, in some cases even centuries or millennia before history gives its final verdict on whether it's right and whether it's wrong. The invitation for us is to be humble, recognizing that the jury is still out on many things, but with what we can, with what we do have, we do the very best we can to do things that are right and to avoid things that are wrong, which is just the inverse, thought, speech, and actions that create negative and destructive long-term consequences for self and others. I believe this is something that people of all religions, all philosophies, all political parties, or, or most of all of these things that most people can agree with.